Hello again, everybody. Scott Casper, Takedown Media. Our coverage of the sport continues with a cat I have not interviewed. I'm going to throw myself on my sword. I have not interviewed since he was a junior in high school, and it was back at Overtime School in Naperville, Illinois, Sean Bormet's place, that I got to uh, meet this young man from Crystal Lake, Illinois. He's Austin Mar Marston. Austin, welcome back. How are you, buddy? I'm doing good, and thank you. So I've been following along with uh, your career and uh, let's let's take you back you had an outstanding high school career and that put you on the map for a cat named john smith at oklahoma state and uh you you had quite a great career at oklahoma state being a big man is tough in this uh in this sport but you lasted it out and uh, posted uh, a very decent record for the cowboys well thank you so let's talk about your time at oklahoma state what did you primarily take away from there as an athlete, and then I'll ask you to do the same thing, answer the question about how you, uh, uh, you know, what you took away as a student and uh, a graduate. So first off, what did you take away as an athlete? Well, I took away from, um, from there as an athlete is that all the, it takes a lot of hard work to reach your goals, and there's a lot of sacrifices you have to make to reach your goals. And when you have a decent career or a nice career, um, it's it's good to look back and knowing that I, I put all my, all the effort I can in there to reach my goals and it was nice to have a bunch of great coaches who uh, who who were there to support me and help me get to where I want to be as an athlete. I think that's including um, John Smith, Zach Esposito, Eric Guerrero. Those guys are great to have and definitely learned a lot from them. Amazing being coaches. An athlete. And, oh, and ma amazing coaches and amazing teachers, really, because that's, I think Bobby Douglas said it best. He said, I'm a teacher first and a coach second. Yes, I agree with that. And those guys, they definitely use that um, mentality of being a teacher first and a coach second. They, Their their amount of knowledge for the sport is unreal. Every little detail they focus on. And that's why I also took about uh, took away from being an athlete, focusing on the small details. Can't <laughs> overpass um, overlook the bigger picture here's the deal in order to wrestle at oklahoma state you have to have a, a decent gpa uh you were a four-year letter winner there so what did you take away uh from oklahoma state besides three uh big 12 championships uh, ncaa qualifier all four years all american in 2014 and 16 what did you take away academically academically i would say that being a wrestler and being a uh, a student is the same thing. You got to focus on getting your work done, focus on getting ahead of the gear, uh, curve and um, making sure that there's there's no shortcuts either on the mat or in the classroom. So that's what I really got from it. So from Stillwater, you head to Army West Point. You head up to uh, New York uh, to work with uh, one of the best uh, coaches, certainly uh, a highly respected coach in uh, in Kevin. Uh, talk to us a little bit about uh, your time with the uh, the cadets. I tell you what, um, this place is is a very unique and special place. It is uh, it's nothing like any other college, and it's easy to say that, but it's cool to to, um, to see it. And um, their their daily schedule is intense, and I give these guys tons of props for doing it. You know, and um, it's, it's hard. Just, it's a hard balance, isn't it? Uh, the, the academics, the hours that uh, the cadets must put in uh, to to even even staying at West Point, just to stay there, uh, let alone to be able to compete on behalf of the Black Knights. It's difficult, isn't it? Oh, it is definitely difficult. But these uh, these cadets, they definitely know how to use their time management skills here, and um, they definitely will learn what their first priorities are, and that's academics. And that's they have a you know a good head on their shoulders to keep that their number one priority. It's interesting the road to becoming a cadet. You have to be recommended by uh, somebody from Washington D.C. or your governor. Uh, you know it's difficult to get in, but it's even harder to stay. Our guest Austin Marzen is our guest at 23 years old. He's got a new job in his future. John Stutzman and uh, you have become acquainted and friends, and he offered you. Uh, a job working with the University of Buffalo. What can you tell us about the uh, the first meeting? Um, first meeting was great. Uh, went up there, met with the, uh, with Coach John Stutzman, and 
talked a lot about how he is as a coach, how he is as a person, then uh, showed me around um, campus, showed me around this uh, football stadium, all that stuff. Then uh, I got to meet with uh, the heavyweight there, Jake Gunning, and um, guy has a lot of heart, has his head in the right place, and I know that he has uh, you know, the skills, the potential to be on the podium next year. And that's the thing with wrestlers. you got to find the people who are determined or self-determined on their own. And I know that uh, kid has it. So I'm really excited to work with Coach uh, Stutzman, real excited to work with the uh, upper weights and gunning. Is he going to be able to keep up with you? There's, you and I are having this off-air discussion about the power of the beard. <laughs> and uh, between you and Robbie Smith, uh, uh, Johnny Hendricks, uh, most of you guys under, that can rock a beard – uh, understand that there is some power in the beard. Uh, you and I both know that college athletes must be clean, clean shaven, at least in competition. Uh, have you guys discussed it? All I know is that I waited five years to have a beard during wrestling season. And, uh, <laughs> I told myself I'm not shaving anymore. I'm going to keep it on there. I, I was going to keep it trimmed up like I have been this year. But like I said earlier, I'm going to let it grow out now. It's time for it to get long. I think, and, uh, the thing about beers, I just they give you confidence. That's what it is. That's it's a confidence booster. And the ladies the biggest love beards, it. nice. The ladies love the beard, so that's the best part. That's the best part. All right, so let's talk about transitioning from uh, from Army West Point to to uh, Buffalo. Uh, you know, I've talked with uh, several guys over the years that have accepted positions at Buffalo. You realize that they don't measure their snowfall in inches there; they measure it in feet. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Um, coming from Illinois, I know you know a couple of things about snow in the winter time, so I ain't too scared of it. I'm actually, looking forward to it. I'm um, not living in Oklahoma for five years, and you get to that snow again. I remember when Paul Bradley left the University of Iowa uh, to take a, an assistant coaching position at Buffalo. I I challenged him with that same information. I said, "When did you uh, When did you have your first meeting?" He said, "June." I said, "Great time to be in Buffalo." <laughs> he said, and then I told him about the snow, and he's from Iowa, so he's not uh, scared of the snow, but uh, perhaps it weighed heavy on his mind and accepted the, a role on uh, the next Ultimate Fighter, or uh, the Ultimate Fighter show, anyway, and uh, the, the rest is history. All right, so you're going to be primarily working with the upper weights, including uh, Mid American Conference heavyweight champ Jake Gunning. What will some of your other responsibilities be to the team? Um, Outside working with the heavyweight, I'll also be working with um, 97, 84 pounders. Um, starting to um, work in the office and get my feet, you know, touching the ground with, um, with the work that goes uh, goes in off the mat. So I'm excited for that. You know, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of you, and uh, one, of, one of the things that uh, your dad is, is so proud of is that the way you're able to manage your size you're six foot two at 23 years old. You can run, you can move, you can change position. Uh, you get it. Um, and I know those 97 pounders are going to be a little bit of a ch more of a challenge for you, but 84, perhaps even more so. Um, what do you, I mean, it's, it's difficult for, you know, a guy like Jake Gunning at 285 to wrestle a, uh, an 84 pounder. How do you do that as a coach? Well, I, for for um, what I see is that a big uh, lie that everyone thinks about heavyweights is that they use their size. And being a heavyweight or being a good at heavyweight, look at all the guys that are competing now. They don't just use their size. They use their speed. They use their positioning. They use everything what other wrestlers do. We're wrestlers first. We're not just heavyweights. And understanding, you know, there's more positions that we need to work on besides, you know, being the – pushing match with heavyweights and wrestling lighter weights will help him help all heavyweights, you know, work on their skills as in their speed and positioning and level changing. And that will really just um, open up the weight class more. So really what you're saying is size is a bonus. The hard work comes in with, with technique, uh, your drilling, and, and we've noticed guys like you, guys like uh, Gwizdowski uh, and others, uh, the heavyweights that are out there, and even the light heavyweight, Kyle Snyder, 
uh, we've noticed a big change in, in heavyweights. And maybe it's not a big change as much as it is a sea change, if you follow what I'm saying. It's a, a, a progression toward more activity for the heavyweights, more exciting scoring. Uh, would you agree with that? I do agree. And the people who are wrestling now, um, they're competing now at this past nationals, the new um, wave of heavyweights of light, uh, athletic, active heavyweights is, um, is definitely the way the heavyweights should be. The, the era of big guys is, is almost gone. And like you said, being big is a bonus. So if you use all those skill sets that all the great heavyweights are using and have size, you're going to go, you're gonna go far places. Mm. Couldn't agree with you more. So the expectation is high from Coach John Stutzman. Known him for years, and uh, he is he's moved around a little bit as well. But every time he makes a step to a different program, uh, he's uh, he's found himself a great home. I believe that Buffalo will be the last stop on his coaching tour. He is expecting some great things. As a matter of fact, uh, he got it last year. Eleven duels, uh, dual meet wins, the most since two thousand four. But more than anything, three wrestlers advanced to the NCAAs, and that's quite a statement. The Bulls coming off their best season in recent memory. Austin, it's always good to get uh, caught up with you, and I, I apologize for it being so long between then and now. But uh, I would like to give you the opportunity to thank those coaches and people in your life that have made it possible for you to uh, get to where you are today. Well, thank you, man. You know that's going to be a long list. But... <laughs> But, uh, you know, you got, first you got to thank my parents, my mom and dad, um, always, you know, pushing me and always giving me the right places at the right time to make, uh, to make my life easier. And, um, coach, of course, um, coach Smith, Esposito, Guerrero, all those guys at OSU that helped me become my, the best wrestler I could be and moving on to my becoming a coach. And I'm really excited about that. I want to thank coach Ward, um, Pierce Saul, and, Chris Chinuma for um, showing me how to now the other side of the uh, of the mat is as being a coach first and I learned a lot from him and I'm excited to get to Buffalo and um, start working you know being the beginning of my coaching career and really excited to hit the ground running with those guys a group of great guys. You had Sean Bormet in your corner, Donnie Reynolds, guys like that in your early career. Went back at Crystal Lake, but. Uh, you you've been like a sponge man you've been soaking up everything that you could possibly uh you know soak up and it, it really showed in your in your collegiate record of 108 and 22 difficult to do indeed we appreciate you joining us in the nike hot seat today austin congratulations on the new position and, and when do you start um i leave the official position starts june 6 okay but, uh, i'll probably head out there uh, a little earlier to get my uh, get everything all set up. All right, get it all set up. Get some mm -hmm. living accommodations uh, worked out, and and start uh, understanding how Buffalo is laid out. It's a pretty campus. It's a great town. It's a wonderful state. Austin Marsden, thanks, bud. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Best to John Stutzman. Best to your dad, by the way. Tell your papa <laughs> no. I said hey. Oh, I will. I like that guy. He's always, you know what? He's always got your back. He does. He always finds his way to get a hold of people. I don't know how he does it, but he's good at it. <laughs> he's creative. He's, 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 he's a creative. Mis a mystery solver. <laughs> that is true. Rock of the beard, Austin Marsden. Thanks, buddy. Oh, <laughs> well, thank you.